Welcome to the fourth tutorial in our PIC 18F14K50 tutorial series that Sergey is putting together. This is a non-MCC tutorial. The next one will be using the MPLAB code configurator, but this one will be just doing it from scratch. What we are doing today is we are using a button. So in our previous tutorial, we turned an LED on and off every half second. Now we will make it so when you push a button, it turns the LED on, push the button again, turns it off, back and forth, back and forth. So basically you can think of this as last tutorial, we discussed how to use an output. This tutorial will discuss how to use an input and an output. So before I get into the schematics here, uh, I will say that you should just be able to make some very minor changes to the last setup. So if you've already done tutorial two or three, um, then you should basically just be able to put on a switch and be good to go. But I want to talk about the weak pull-up resistors that we will be using for this switch. Now, the PIC 18F, 18F14K50 actually has uh, internal weak pull-up resistors that are internal to it, and you just need to turn it on. And if you don't remember what a pull-up resistor, we've talked about it in a lot of other tutorials, but I'll just touch on it briefly. All that does is that basically makes the input of the pin tied weakly to VCC or your power rail. And what that means is that you have a large, usually a 10,000 ohm or greater resistor between the power rail and the input so that if nothing's connected to it, it floats up to your power rail. In this case, it'll be about five volts. But as soon as you connect it to ground, it will immediately go down to ground without causing any problems and without a huge amount of current. And you really want to have a pull-up uh, resistor either internally in this case or externally if you don't have it on any input because that way you won't get kind of this fluttering random voltage. So if you haven't ever dealt with pull-up resistors, that's very briefly what it is. Uh, Sergey has gone into much greater depth in other tutorials, not in this series. So you can go check those out if you still have any lingering questions. But with that, let's move on to the schematic diagram. So as I mentioned, we didn't change things very much. If anything, this looks exactly like what we did in tutorials two and three, except we have our switch here connecting our RB6 to ground. That is the only difference we have in the schematic, but one of the benefits is RB6 and the entire RB port has weak pull-ups. So unless you're pushing that button, it is tied to VCC. And as it's reading that input, it'll see it as high unless you're pressing the button. Uh, all right, so the, the physical setup is quite straightforward. That is good to go. I think now we can just jump straight into the software itself. So one thing is when I was doing tutorials two and three, I had everything hooked up when I started my project. And this time I didn't. And when you go through and it asks, hey, what debugging tool do you want to use? I, it didn't pop up automatically because it wasn't connected. So I thought, hmm, that's, that's not good. That might make it another step to add that tool, but it's not a big deal. So I just wanted to go over that briefly, that if you create your project and it's not connected to your Picket 4, all you have to do is literally have X or MP Lab open, plug it in, you'll get a little thing in the corner saying, hey, we detected your Picket 4. And then it won't automatically add to your project, but you can just go to project settings, which that either is going to your project up the top, right clicking on it and hitting properties, or you can click this button right here and hit properties. And then once you click that, it'll pop up and say, hey, do you want to use this picket for? And you just say yes, and you're good to go, you're golden. So just FYI, if that happens to you and you're like, oh my goodness, how do I add my picket to this later? That's how you do it, very straightforward. So now let's jump into the program itself. Um, we have already put all the config bits basically exactly like we did in the previous tutorials. Um, we can double check those if we want, just to see that our Oscillator is our internal RC oscillator. Watchdog timer enable is off and LVP is off. So we are good to go, good to go. So we won't worry about the config bits anymore. And probably in future tutorials, we won't even mention those again, unless there's something specific that we need to deal with. So we have our entirety of the program. It's here in what is showing to be lines 63 through 85. And it does look a lot more complicated and it is a little bit more complicated, but it's not that bad. As we see in 65, we still have pin RC0 as an output. We have that tris bit set to zero. But then in 66, we have our RB6 pin as an input, which is the pin that we've connected our switch to. So nothing too exciting here. 
Now in 67, we see that enable pull-up resistor at RB6 pin in Sergey's comments. And we can look at that WPUB bits dot WPUB6 equals one. Now, this is one of those things where it just makes a lot more sense if you know what those commands are. And so you can just look at that as WPU weak pull up B, that's for port B because this is RB6 is on port B, and then bits. That means that instead of addressing all of it, you just want to address one of the bits in that point in that port, and then you do dot, and then you say which bit that is, and that is WPU B6. And so that's all that's saying on 67 is weak pull up port B bits, weak pull up port B6 equals one. So once you know that, it makes a lot more sense. And it's nice, this is one of the benefits of the IDE is that since it's highlighted in green, or not highlighted, but is green text, you know that you've named it correctly and everything is good to go. Then in 68, you have intcon 2 bits dot n r a b p u equals zero. This one's a little bit more complicated because there's an oddity here. You would think intcon, well, that seems something like interrupt control. And you'd be right, that, that's exactly it. It's interrupt control register two. And then you want to adjust, address the bits. And you're like, well, but we're not dealing with interrupts, are we? No, no, we're not. We're not dealing with interrupts at all. However, uh, probably just because the designers of the chip are like, ah, oh, we have an extra bit here. Let's stick it right here. The global, um, the global control for weak pull-ups is actually in the interrupt control register, which is random, but that's why it is right there. So intcon2, most of that register is ded dedicated to interrupt control, but in this case, this one bit, it's dedicated to the pull-ups. So the dot NRABPU is a little bit more straightforward. That N basically means it's inverse, so it's active low. So in this case, when you have zero, that means that you do want to enable the weak pull-ups. And then RAB is just port RA and port RB PU pull-ups. So again, that's what 68 is doing. So in 67, we said specifically we want, want RB6 pull-up to be initialized. And then in 68, we initialized all of them in general. And you'll notice this a lot in microcontroller work that you'll have like global and then you'll have specific and you'll, maybe I'm going the wrong way with my hands, but you can say, hey, I want to enable this one thing, but if you haven't enabled it globally, it won't work. And that's just so you can, if you'd like to, with one changing one bit, turn off a whole bunch of stuff, turn on a whole bunch of stuff, and then also allow you the granularity if you want to control just that single thing. So that's what's going on in 67 and 68. Now in 69, we get into the meat of our program. And that's basically where we check in 71 if the button is low. So port B bits dot RB6 equals equals zero. So in that if statement, it's saying, hey, is this, is this zero? And since it's active, well, since it's normally high, right now, it's not high, it's just sitting there. And this is an incredibly inefficient, simple, but inefficient way to check for a button, button push because it's just checking. Is it, is it hot? Is it pushed? Nope, okay, is it pushed? Nope, okay, just over and over. And that's all it's doing, uh, over and over, forever and ever. So the problem with this is it's called what's blocking. It's blocking the ability for the CPU, the microcontroller, to do anything else. And in a later tutorial coming up soon, we learn how to create a button function that does not block other activities. And that is obviously much better, but this is simple and good for our needs right now. So in 71, we are checking to see if our switch has been, or if our button's been pushed and that input drops low. And then in 73, we have what's called a debounce delay. Now, if you're familiar with microcontrollers at all, you know that, well, that doesn't just have to be microcontrollers. If you're familiar with switches at all, you know that when you push a button, it's not a perfect square, like, oh, it, it jumps. There's like bounces and uh, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. And so sometimes you don't know, is this noise or is this a button being pushed? So this is a very, mm, very common yet very heavy handed way of checking to see if the button has actually been pushed or it's just noise. And so what happens is you push the button, it says, hey, I just detected that it's low. Let's wait 20 milliseconds. 
Is it still low? Oh, okay, he must have really pushed the button. So that is why you have the same exact thing in 74 as you do in 71. Is you checking to see if it's low? If it is, you wait 20 milliseconds, then you check to see if it's low again. And then if it is, you're like, oh, great. Now the way this particular program is set up is that it actually toggles when you release. So on line 76, you get that while port b bits dot rb6 equals equals zero, you just wait. And so then you get into this loop where you're just waiting and now it's checking to see if it goes high. And then it waits, waits, waits. As soon as you release, it does that same debounce because you get the noise going either direction, waits 20 milliseconds, and then in line 78, if it has actually been released, it says, all right, we're done. Let's actually do the action, break out of this, and go back up to line 69 and start that while loop over again. Now in line 80, you can see the exact same command that we had in the last tutorial, which just toggles the bit. So in 80, you just get that XOR function that says whatever the current value is, toggle it to the other one. And, and that's it. Once it does that, it's just sitting there waiting, 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 pushes the button, it does those checks, toggles it, waits, 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 push the button, checks the button, toggles it, and it just waits. So that is all this microcontroller is going to be doing which is not using it to its greatest potential, but again, sometimes you need it. Sometimes you just need something simple. Okay, so with that, let us actually program this thing. Uh, I already programmed it before, so there shouldn't be anything surprising going on here. Yes, programming verify complete. Okay, so now we can just test this out and you can see again that push it up, push on, push off, push on, push off. Now there's a couple of things you can notice here is first I push and then release, and that's when it toggles, as I mentioned earlier. Push, release, so it's performing exactly as we wanted. Now we currently have a 20 millisecond debounce, and so that's something where you can try and get it so it doesn't go, but I think that 20 milliseconds is fast enough that it's still very responsive, but, oops, and I just pulled that up, please be careful, and uh, yet yeah, it's slow enough that uh, it's not really affecting anything. So I think 20 milliseconds for this application seems to be a pretty sweet spot. So that seems to be working quite well, exactly as we anticipated. So that's about it for this tutorial. We learned about the weak pull-ups. We learned about using inputs as well as outputs. Uh, we learned about the weak pull-up needing both the local and the global enabling bit. So that's something that you need to watch out for, not just with weak pull-ups, but basically anything. Uh, make sure that everything is set up properly. Uh, everything seems to be quite straightforward. We're gonna get set up and we're going to do another tutorial just like this, but we will be using the MP Lab code configurator to get ourselves a little bit more comfortable with that. Now the homework that Sergey has for this is to make it so when you push the button, not only does it toggle, but when you're holding the button, it oscillates at four hertz, or basically four times a second. So that will add an interesting dimension there. So if you want to do that before jumping over the MCC uh, tutorial, that would be fantastic. If you like this tutorial, if it, you found it helpful at all, please give the video a like, subscribe to our channel, and we will catch you in the next one. Take care.